All right, so I've had some requests to uh, do a little demo of Google SketchUp. So let's do that. We've got SketchUp 8. I'm going to click and load it here. You'll probably get this when you start up. Um, go down to Template and click on the arrow. And you might be up at the top when you start. Go down until uh, you see Plan View Feet and Inches. Click so that it's got the box around it. And then do Start, start Using SketchUp. All right, so what you want to do is start with a rectangle is what I usually do. And um, we're just going to wait until it clicks and locks on the point of origin there. So I'm going to start drawing a rectangle until I have it about, I want a living room that's about, uh, let's say 15 by 20 or so. And that's not about right, but I'm going to let go. Take your uh, finger off the mouse and you get this here, okay? But you can get it to the exact dimensions you want just by typing in. You notice down here, I typed in 20. Oh, and it backed up. 20, apostrophe, comma. And let's do a pretty big living room. Let's do 20 by 15. Got a big TV and lots of surround stuff. And look, it automatically does it for you. Now. So I've got one room that I've started. Now it's off the screen, so I'm gonna click on this hand tool where it says pan, hold it down, and I can move it around. You, if you have a mouse wheel, you can use it to zoom in and out. Now what I would suggest doing, because I told you guys I wanted the dimensions on there. So as you create each room, you should probably add the dimensions. It'll make it a lot easier. So the way that you do that is you go to Tools, Go down where it says dimensions, click on that. You're going to wait till it locks to an endpoint there. See how it says endpoint? Click. And then as you drag it, you'll notice that it gives you the dimensions. Okay, you want to go to another endpoint. If I go here, one, it's not going to lock. I have to lock onto an endpoint. Diagonal's not going to do you much good here. We just want this. So you click again, and then you'll notice if you move your mouse, it drags it around. So I like it kind of near the wall, so it's a little bit, takes up a little bit less real estate. Click on it again, and you're done. But I also want to do the other direction. So I'm going to go to the end point again, click, drag down this time, click again, pull it in. Now you see I've got a 20 by 15 room there. That's going to be my living room. Okay, I am going to add something to it in a minute. But first, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea as to uh, how to, oop, I don't want to do that, how to move it around. Okay, you can select things with the select tool. You'll notice it kind of gets shaded. You can deselect it by going to edit and select none. Or if you select it and then click off it, it'll uh, deselect it for you too. But let's say I want to do another room. Okay, let's give myself a little bit here. And why don't we do a little entryway? So I am going to do another rectangle. So I'll click on the rectangle again. Again, go to an endpoint. Okay, and just kind of click and drag. Now, if you go up and down, you can see which dimension you're changing. So the first dimension that's shown down in the right hand corner there, that's the length this way, left and right. Up and down changes the second one. So I want an entryway, let's say, oh, let's make it 10 by 10. I'm going to click and stop, do 10 apostrophe for feet, comma, 10 apostrophe, done. Does it right there for you. And again, I would suggest doing the dimensions as you go. So dimensions, find an endpoint, drag it, click, pull it down. Endpoint, down, click, drag it over. Okay, this is going to help you when you actually have to build it and when you have to figure out square footage, all that other good stuff. So now I know an entryway wasn't in there, but we're going to need hallways and stuff, so this makes sense. All right. Um, let's see. What should we add next to the living room? Let's do, let's do a couple bathrooms. Because so you need two bathrooms, so I'm going to put one bathroom here and another one next to it that will attach to a kind of a master bedroom. So... What's nice about this, to make everything nice and clean, if I clean, if I drag over to here, notice it kind of stops and turns blue at the midpoint. It's an easy way to keep your dimensions from getting out of hand. So I'm going to click, 
drag to the corner, drag up. And why don't we make this bathroom say 10 by 8. So 10 apostrophe comma 8 apostrophe enter resizes it right away for me. And I'm going to make the other bathroom the same size. So drag it over and down. So see how it locks in the endpoint there. And that way, if I go endpoint to endpoint, I don't have to worry about typing anything in because if you look in the lower right hand corner, it says 10 apostrophe comma 8 apostrophe, which is what I wanted. Okay, so now I've got my two bathrooms and a living room. I'm actually making quite a bit of headway here. And let's not forget, forget to do the dimensions. Endpoint to endpoint, drag it down a little, endpoint to endpoint, move it over. We'll do the same thing here. Drag it down, endpoint to endpoint. Oh, click, and then drag it over. Okay. So let's add a master bedroom. We're going to make this one, well, it's pretty big. We'll do a pretty sizable master bedroom since it does have it. So let's make this 20 by 10. Okay, right now I'm at about a little over 20 by almost 14. So let's change that to 20 apostrophe, 10 apostrophe. That's a little bit better. Now, remember, these are feet. So a 20 foot by 10 foot room, that's actually a pretty decent sized room. Um, and it would have a nice size, you know, master bath attached. And this one would have, you know, this would be kind of like the common one. You don't have to put in doorways, so don't worry about that. Tools, I am going to go to, again, dimensions, click the corners, drag it down a little, click the corners, drag it over. Good. Now, let's say we want this to be the back of the house. Well, what we can do is I want my master uh, bedroom to have a nice little view out. Uh, let's make it out the back. So I'm going to go to draw, because here you have, well, let me click over here for a second. I've got a rectangle, a circle, and an arc. We're not going to use the arc at all, so ignore that one. Circle we'll use eventually, but remember I said you needed triangles and another polygon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a trapezoid, but the way that I'm going to do that I'm going to do draw on polygon, and it's automatically going to go to six sides, which is fine. Because what I'm going to eventually, what I'm going to do is a trapezoid, but the six sides helps me, uh, makes it a little bit better. And see how I clicked on the midpoint, and if I drag this, it kind of stretches it out. Now I can stretch it all the way, but that'd be kind of a funny looking room. So if you see that radius down there, that's what I'm kind of keeping an eye on. Now the room is 20 feet long. Remember, the diameter of it is twice the radius. So let's make it easy, and let's make the radius 5 apostrophe. Now, no commas or anything here, and hit Enter, and done. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could edit these points, but it's not necessary. Um, and if you really, really wanted to do that, we would be doing this button right here, Move. You would click on an endpoint. But see here, that's where it gets tricky is it starts doing crazy stuff like that. So we're going to just <clears throat> undo that just so it's recentered. And I don't want these lines down here because they're not necessary. Besides, I said I was doing a trapezoid, right? This isn't a trapezoid. So I'm going to go to my select tool and click on it. Notice how the whole thing turns blue. Well, the whole thing that's inside the room. And I'm going to delete that. Okay, I'm going to leave this one here for now, though, because that I want. And in fact, I'm going to want some other lines in here, too, because we're going to need to figure out area. And I've basically got two right triangles and a rectangle or a square. So since I'm going to need some extra lines, if you ever need that for measuring, you're going to go to tape measure. And notice I can, how it kind of clicks to the end point. Click, drag it down, and click again. Click. Drag it down, click again. Okay, and then we can go to Tools, Dimensions. First, we're going to want to find this one. Pull it down. Now, notice I have an intersection here, which is good. That's what I want. So I can click, drag it, and just scoot it up a little bit. Same with over here. So that's about two and a half feet because that's two by six. And then here, 
Okay, now that's, you might want to do a little bit of a different dimension uh, when you do yours. Because notice it's like 4 feet, 3 and 15 16 inches. I'm not going to expect you to be so exact. Even if it's on your floor plan, we can round that to like uh, 4 feet, 4 inches just to make it easy. But I'm just basically showing you how to do it. Um, so we've got our other sh polygon shape. Let's go ahead and add in the circle while I'm doing other shapes. So we're going to go to circle. And let's put it right on the corner. We're going to go to end point. And let's drag it out to about, let's see, this room's 20. Let's make this, and eh, let's make the radius 5 feet. So again, it's not exact right now. It says 5 feet, 11 and 11 16 inches. We're just going to do 5 apostrophe, and we're good. Go up to Tool, Dimensions, do the end point at the center, and then go to an edge of the circle. You don't need to drag it much. We're good right there. So that tells us our radius is five feet, which is gonna come in handy again when you're figuring out the area. So now my house is starting to take shape. I actually have to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our dining room. Actually, before I do that, why don't I add in a hallway? Because we need to be able to get to this room here. So uh, let's say we're gonna do a five foot wide hallway, nice and wide, plenty of room for people to get by. And Unfortunately, the way that I did this is I don't know if I can get that to lock on exactly. Oh, yeah, it worked. So you can drag it over the endpoint and then drag it back and it'll keep it nice and even for you. So tools, dimensions. Nope, didn't mean to click on that one. So endpoint to endpoint, drag it. Endpoint down to the other one, drag it. Now I don't need this line in here, so I can. This is me being a perfectionist. I'm going to highlight that and delete it. But notice it keeps the dimensions, which is going to come in handy for figuring things out. All right, now let's add a small little closet. On edge. So we're going to do, uh, we'll do, I'm going to make it an even 5 by 5 So again, this one I'm going to have to type in 5 apostrophe, comma, 5 apostrophe, enter. Perfect. Dimensions, endpoint to endpoint, drag it down, endpoint to endpoint, pull it over. Good. So, one bedroom, two bathrooms, living room, circle. Here's my square. I said I needed a square. This closet would be a good one, five by five. We've got our trapezoid here. Okay. So now what are we missing? We're missing a kitchen, uh, another bedroom and a garage and a triangle so I'm gonna kind of cheat a little bit and feel free to do that if you want as well but uh, and I'll show you how in a second let's make the dining room let's do the have the dining room being even 15 by 15 too so 15 apostrophe apostrophe comma 15 apostrophe there's my dining room again tools I can't stress enough the importance of doing the dimensions as you go. One, it'll make it easier, and two, if you accidentally delete a line, it's hard to kind of get back, and sometimes dimensions get confused. All right, so now let's add our kitchen, and why don't we, let's see right now, that's a little bit small, so why don't we do, um, we'll start from this end point down here. So it looks like this is gonna be a 20-foot kitchen, and you know what? I'm a cooker, so I like big kitchens. Uh, let's do 20 by 12 looks good. So I'm going to have to type that one in. Done. And then we're going to add a, another bedroom. And let's kind of throw that on the back. This is 20 by 12. I've got, uh, let's see, this is six feet to play with. So why don't we make this a smaller bedroom? And we'll do this one. It looks like we're going to do this about 20 by 12 also. 20 apostrophe comma 12 apostrophe done. Okay. Now we need a garage. So uh, you figure most cars are 
they usually give, I don't know, let's just say 10 to 12 feet per car and have a two car garage. So we're looking at 20, let's just make 30 feet wide. Okay, in most cars, we probably need at least 15 to 20 feet deep. So let's just do 30. So we're gonna drag it out to about 30 just so I have an idea. Yeah, let's just do 30 by 20. So 30 apostrophe comma 20 apostrophe done. There's our garage. Now remember how I said I was going to cheat? Well, we still need what? We've got our bedroom and I didn't do the dimensions. So let me do that now. So dimensions. So that's 20 by 12, which the kitchen also is. And yeah, I know I didn't throw any closets in. I could probably do that if I wanted to. And if it were mine, I would. But I'm not going to right now, just for the sake of it. If you guys want to throw that in, you're more than welcome to. Um, but we've got our garage. So we have our rectangles. We've got a circle. We've got a trapezoid. We need a triangle. So this is where it gets tricky. We need, again, we're going to go to draw and polygon. Now, see how it starts with that six-sided figure there? Triangle has three sides. So if you look in your right-hand corner, you see a thing that says sides. We're going to hit three, enter. And this is where it kind of gets hard to get just right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this triangle on the edge. And, well, no, I don't like that. Okay, that just doesn't look right to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit ESC, and it automatically gets rid of it. Let's try it over here. That's a little bit better. Still not quite what I wanted though. This one you're gonna have to play around. Oh, there we go. If you lock it on, oh, that's perfect. So, but Mr. Higgins, this is a huge triangle. You're not gonna use all that. Watch this. Escape, go to your select tool, click that line, delete, click that line. Start deleting all these extra lines that you didn't need. If you accidentally delete something you didn't intend to, like, oh, what did I just do? I got rid of the floor. Edit, undo, erase. There's the line. And that one. And now look, I'm left with a nice little triangular deck, which we will get the dimensions of. Okay, yeah, it's kind of an odd dimension, but you're going to be stuck with one of them. And let's do the garage too. 30 by 20. So I've got all my dimensions. I've met all my criteria. All I need to do now is mess with the flooring. So what I'm going to do is see this little paint bucket here? Okay, you have all these different types of things. So let's do carpet and textiles. Um living room I need to have that carpet as much as I would love hardwood in there I like to listen to my stuff loud and my wife hates it so we need something to do a little bit of soundproofing so we can click on that uh, let's say we want some carpeting in the bedrooms oh and if you want you can also change the color with this edit here uh, I'm gonna leave that charcoal though but just so you see the select you pick the carpeting edit you can change the color okay nice and easy um, garage, that's just going to be concrete. So we can go down to where it says, or up, asphalt and concrete. Um, this looks about the closest to a garage floor as you would have. Yep, that works. Kind of a really unfinished garage floor. Um, it says aggregate smoke. Let's try and redo it. Yeah, that's better. All right, um, we'll do some wood for the deck. Um, wood floor light. Oh, no, don't do that. Undo paint. Wood floor light. Oh, see, I didn't have it selected. There we go. So there's our deck. The kitchen makes sense to have some tile, not translucent tile. Um, this looks like kind of a kitcheny, retro, hipster kind of kitchen tile. That'll wake you up in the morning. Bathroom tile. Uh, to me, this screams bathroom tile. But master bathroom, let's do that one a little bit different. Um, let's see. Bedroom. 
Well, we can do some more carpeting in there. Carpet and textiles. Uh, we'll do this loop pattern. We'll throw it in here too. Uh, the other bedroom, let's say they want to do some hardwood in there. So let's give them some dark hardwood. Oh, and go right over it. Living room. I like the uh, wood in the living room too. Uh, let's do something a little bit different though. Let's just do this. For a, no, I guess we'll go with that. All right, in the hallway, um, let's go back to tile for that. That works. And we'll do this kind of, uh, no, we got that, we got that. Let's do the hexagon white. And for the closet, I guess we should carpet that. And we'll just do this kind of plush forest. And look, voila, we're done. Okay, so that really didn't take all that long. And I'm done, and I met all my criteria. All you would have to do is go ahead and uh, label these. You can do it by hand. You may be able to, I haven't actually messed around with that to see. Yep, you could do text even. So let's say we could type in living room. Nope, we don't need to enter. Done. Okay. You could even draw. So if you hold and drag, you can go ahead and it'll, you know, it'll drag away like it's pointing to it. One thing to notice is, look, these actually kind of uh, give you the area ahead of time. So that's kind of neat. That's a nice tool to have um, just for you to compare your answers to. So. That is it. That's all I'll do for the tutorial. Let's just say, I'll just show you again. You can just type in garage, delete all the extra stuff, hit enter, and you're good. You can always hit ESC to escape things too. All right, so that's it. Hopefully that helped. Um, sorry if I went a little quick, but you can always pause and kind of follow along that way. So anyway, enjoy the video Hope or enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope the video helped.